is up everybody welcome back to another video in today's video we're going to be talking about the lion's latest news rumors and reports so let's get it started you no know, i got a shout out dose of the uh, man because it was actually the first time i went live on youtube and uh you know guys don't know dose of the uh he put out a lot of good content for the detroit lines Welcome everybody to the video, glad you guys are here, and we got another episode of Lions Latest. Now, unfortunately, this time it doesn't say Lions Latest on the board. Actually, it doesn't really have anything on the board. That that side I just had left there, but the, there's nothing. My, my marker doesn't work anymore, so uh, I might have to get some new markers. Okay, unfortunately, I guess I left the lid off it, now it don't work, so just, just imagine it says Lions Latest up there. Wow, I never thought of it that way. Because that's what today's episode is about. Now, most of this is about the draft, but not all of it, because the draft is only three days away, which is just crazy that the draft is only three days away. It almost feels like it, it, it's taking way too long, but at the same time, it's not taking long enough like it's getting here too fast i feel like i'm still behind on a lot of my draft stuff i am working on my receiver big board hopefully that's out soon i just have not finished my rankings i'm just struggling there's too many prospects man there's way too many i don't maybe i'm gonna have to limit it or something but regardless that should be coming out soon but today it's about the lion's latest news rumors and reports so let's just dive right into it now this first part is not about the draft this is about some players that are being brought back to detroit in 2021 i think we may have touched on some of this before but I'm not 100% sure, so I thought we'd just go back over it. Uh, and this is that the Detroit Lions are bringing back three exclusive rights free agents. Now, an exclusive rights free agent is a player that has secured less than three seasons in the NFL. Contract is expiring. So with that in mind, basically the Lions can bring them back for another season at the league minimum, and they can't refuse it. So that that's what's happening here. And the Lions have done that with three players. Those players include Jack Fox, Jason Cabinda, and Matt Nelson. Now, we start with Jack Fox. He was a Pro Bowl punter last season. So all these guys are going to be free agents next year, of course, unless, you know, they get an extension or whatever. But Jack Fox being a pro bowler last year, hopefully he can keep that up into this season. He could be looking at, you know, a solid payday for a punter next year if he can if he can replicate what he was able to do last season. I would expect the Lions to bring him back. Obviously, that's a, that's a ways out, so we'll have to wait and see. Jack Fox was tremendous last season, so he's going to be brought back on a very cheap deal for night this season, which is just great for the Detroit Lions to get their punter at that kind of price that was just a pro bowler. Then you take a look at Jason Cabinda. Now, Jason Cabinda is a fullback. He went from linebacker to fullback. He was our fullback last season as Nick Bowden has dealt with some injuries. And Nick Bowden still is on the roster. So you may be wondering, whoa, 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 hold up. Why, why we got both these guys on the roster? Well, I'm assuming it's just for competition purposes. I mean, the Lions can have these guys battle it out during the offseason. Not necessarily meaning that they're both going to make the team, but one can make it. Maybe one does it. If you cut them, you know, it is what it is. But it is an opportunity for those guys to battle and have competition. Or maybe they're thinking they move Cabinda back to linebacker. I don't think so. I don't think so. But I had to throw it out there. And then finally, Matt Nelson. Talk about transitioning. Matt Nelson went from defensive line out of college at Iowa to offensive tackle for the Detroit Lions. He's six foot eight, two ninety five. And I guess when he got the call from the Lions, he was like, they were like, hey, we're, we're, we want to move you to offensive lineman. And that's what he did. You know, they, they kind of like let him sit behind and learn and try to transition to that position. Last season, we saw him play over 200 snaps at that spot. And while he wasn't great by any means, it didn't say, hey, here's our future. He was a solid player. And I think against the Bears, he didn't allow any sacks, which was a big deal. So Matt Nelson, solid depth, cheap price, all of these players, especially Jack Fox. to get a Pro Bowl caliber punter at a league minimum. I mean, you can't ask for more than that. So those players will be back to Detroit next season. But now let's get into these rumors. And these are draft rumors. And you know what? Draft rumors are swirling right now. We have three days to the draft. There's a lot of craziness going on. But we do have some reports. And you know what? We report the craziness because the craziness is entertaining. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, is, he? is he? Is he being for real this time? All right. We'll throw it over there. So apparently we have Bob reporting live from the Lions practice facility. I'm not sure how he got in there, but apparently... He has the inside scoop on what the Lions are doing with the seventh pick. So we're going to throw it in there with a, with some breaking news. I guess, I don't even know if the, I don't I don't know what to expect. So we're, we're going to throw it over to him. So, uh, yeah, you guys can put him on. Fine, it's fine. He's Bob, okay with it. He's perfectly fine. We Bob, all the bathroom. Hey, what's up, Dose? How's it going, hey, man? man? Hey, are you in a bathroom? It's good to, good to see you. It looks like a practice facility. What are you doing? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, no, we're in the practice facility. I'm just, I was using a quick restroom break, a couple hours in and out. You know, you know, nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, why are you still in there, though? Like, why didn't you go out um, to the bathroom? Actually, funny you say that, um, uh -huh. you know, I was like, okay, I could give them like a look around the bathroom nah, if they want to, but you know, that gift card you gave me at Taco Bell, snap, I appreciate the gift, but dang, that messed I me up. Give you, you know I didn't give saying? you a gift card. Huh? I didn't give you a gift card. No, the one you gave me. The one. You took my gift card? No, no, no. I'm thinking the wrong thing. The one, I, the one I bought. I, you I took bought. my gift card. No, I didn't take it. You clearly took it. It's not a wallet. I know which one you're I talking about. I bought this one. You took my gift card. Uh, yeah, we had some uh, news to report, okay. actually. 
I was talking to the locals and it was crazy. We ran across an NFL expert and I was just like, hey man, what do you think? And he's like, dude, I already know how the whole draft is going to go. Okay. So, you know, my man Willie over here, if, if water's not wet, then how is air not dry if I have an air dryer? Someone explain that to me. <laughs> I see you, Willie. You're looking good, my boy. You're looking good. He actually wears pants on his head. I guess that's style. And I actually think it's kind of cool looking. Why are I mean, we really? Doing this, guys? I, I think he's wearing, I don't know who swim. Is those, are those yours? Is that your swimsuit? No? He said it's not his swimsuit. So I don't know where he got it from. But regardless, it looks cool. Okay, what you got? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. He said, he said like, I, I don't remember. I think he said, like, we were going to draft a long snapper or something and that, you know, Dan Campbell was, like, you know, trying to trick us all with what he said. I don't know. I mean, I I, I feel like he, he, I feel like the pants on the head kind of seals the deal for me. So, so all right. Yeah. Is that, uh, is that it? Uh, yes, that is all okay. I have. Hey, man, say bye, bye to, say bye to Willie first. Remember Willie, the guy with the wig I was telling you about? Hey, that's yeah, the guy that with my car. You stole my car, Yeah, that Willie. That, hey. Uh, hey someone go, someone go get him. Someone, no, no, no. someone go get that turn, guy. Turn it, he turn it off. First comes from Albert Breer, who says he believes the Lions are one of the hungriest teams in the league to trade back in this year's draft. And the Lions only have six picks. He didn't specify at seven. I don't think he did. But regardless, only having six picks in this year's draft could mean the Lions would be interested in trading back. Potentially, as they have stated, there's a cluster of guys they would be very willing to select at number seven. But Brad Holmes made it kind of clear in his presser, that uh, in his latest presser, that, you know, they are open for business. And apparently, according to Brad Holmes, they have also talked to multiple teams about potentially trading. So we'll see if it happens, but I can definitely understand the Detroit Lions being open for business at number seven, wanting to get more than six picks, wanting to have some late round picks, and also potentially adding some future picks because I think the Lions are very willing to take those just from the vibes we're getting from Dan Campbell, Brad Holmes about for the future. I think they'd be very willing to take some future draft picks. So it could open up doors for trade back options. And right now with this year's draft class was how many quarterbacks are expected to go so high. Teams are going to get interested. And if anybody slips through, all of a sudden, these teams are like, oh, hold up, this quarterback slipped through. Once draft day hits, man, there's a different type of pressure. Speaking on teams that could potentially trade up with the Detroit Lions, what teams could have contacted the Detroit Lions? Well, we won't know that. But Tom Pelicero, I, I don't know if I'm saying his name right. You guys know who Tom is. I mean, everybody knows that name from Twitter. I can't think, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Regardless, though, don't worry about that part. We have some rumors here, and this is that the Eagles have contacted both the Detroit Lions and the Carolina Panthers about potentially moving up. Now, Eagles are very interesting to me because the Eagles initially moved from six out of the top 10 and number 12. They traded back with the Miami Dolphins. So maybe they're thinking, hey, we could go back and then back up. We could just finesse everybody. I mean, maybe if you can do it, or, you know, maybe there's someone that they're like kind of rethinking. I don't know exactly what the thought idea is here, but there's also word that the Eagles basically contact everybody for the draft, just trying to see what could happen. So it may not be that serious. It may just be, hey, what is it going to take? You know, what is it going to take? Just simple form. Hey, what's it going to take? Okay, cool. We're not doing that. But, you know, it could be just as simple as that. Apparently, that's what Roseman does uh, for Philadelphia. But I've heard the rumors that if Philadelphia was was interested in trading up, the two pieces they would trade up for is number one, Kyle Pitts, and number two, a quarterback. Now, they have said that Jalen Hurts is the one, but there's going to be open competition there. So they haven't said, this is our quarterback, no way we're drafting somebody. So they have left that door open. Now, from what I've seen, most people believe that would be a Justin Fields. We touched on this in our last line's latest, but as I mentioned before, Philadelphia fans kind of surprised me with their response to this. Like, they wanted a different quarterback. Like, they weren't in love with Jalen Hurts like I thought they may have been. So... You never know. I mean, you can't count it out. But let's add on to that a little bit. Most people believe that teams trading up would be trading up for a guy like Justin Fields. However, Adam Schefter believes that there's a very good chance that Justin Fields falls to a team like the Detroit Lions. He thinks that could definitely happen in this year's draft. So if all these teams are interested in a guy like Justin Fields, if Fields falls because teams like San Francisco go with Mac Jones or Trey Lance, which seems to be the rumored top two choices right now, I listened to Mel Kuyper say that he believes it's going to be one of those two guys. So with that in mind, now it's all about Atlanta. And what's Atlanta going to do? If Atlanta sits and takes a guy like Kyle Pitts, now you got a very legitimate shot of a guy like Fields falling unless someone trades up to five or six. But of course, the Bengals aren't taking him. And of course, the Dolphins wouldn't take him. So now you got a very legitimate shot. So good, basing off of these rumors here from the Philadelphia Eagles, is that if Philadelphia is interested in a quarterback, let's just say hypothetically it's Justin Fields, and or Kyle Pitts, if a guy like Fields goes. Let's say, for example, the first three, you know, we see Trevor Lawrence, we see Zach Wilson, and we see Trey Lance or something like that, you know. But then the fourth pick, whether it's the Falcons or someone trades up, all of a sudden the fourth pick there goes 
Justin Fields and my and Philadelphia doesn't move up now there's a good chance Kyle Pitts could also fall I mean we haven't heard much about the Bengals taking him they could you know definitely Dolphins could as well but he could fall at that point even if those top four quarterbacks are gone someone's got to fall so if you got a guy like Kyle Pitts now more than just Philadelphia you could see teams like Arizona come into play because they apparently have been interested in Kyle Pitts knowing that they're going to run a lot of two tight end sets so Kyle Pitts then comes into play for them and Arizona one of those teams that could be more willing to take a deal from a team like Detroit because we could take future uh, picks and Arizona's in a win now type of mode right so we could accept future picks which again could be very intriguing to a team like Arizona so there's a lot of teams that can come into this mix still have one of those top five quarterbacks still there you know assuming the Bengals or Dolphins don't do anything crazy in the Dolphins why would they trade back out I mean they traded back up so why would you trade up and then trade back out it doesn't make any sense so assuming nothing crazy happens there you still got Mac Jones or Trey Lance or Fields or someone that still fell available so there's still a quarterback out there and you still can't count out Carolina from taking one you still Still can't count out Denver from taking one at nine. Next team that has apparently, you know, been making some phone calls about moving up is Minnesota. Now, the issue with Minnesota is that they're a divisional team. So a team that's finishing at number 14 here is a divisional team. There's been a lot of teams that apparently couldn't be interested in trading up. And just because we hear these doesn't mean these are the only options. A team like Minnesota being in the division could make this something that doesn't happen. However, Minnesota, the reason they would be trading up from what I've seen is two reasons. Number one, potentially grabbing a quarterback trading up, grabbing a quarterback, and potentially finding a replacement there for a guy like Kirk Cousins. Or number two, it would be drafting offensive line help. In mind, I feel like there's two ways that this could go. Number one, again, I don't know what quarterback they're looking for. Is it just a field? If field slips, a lot of teams are probably going to be very interested in that spot. A few times I've also seen Trey Lance's name thrown out there as well. So with a guy like Trey Lance, potentially a few goes earlier, maybe Lance is the guy that slips. A team like Minnesota, yeah, they could trade up for the quarterback. But then you also look at a position like offensive line. Now, offensive line is a spot they've sort of addressed in free agency. He broke down the roster. There's still a very good chance that they draft a tackle uh, for this season. Because not even for this year, but also to, you know, develop for what they have at that tackle position as well. More of the push here from Minnesota side has been for an offensive lineman. But a lot of it has been about the thought of them trading up with a team like Miami at number six. So maybe Miami did pull this off. They said, hey, we're going to trade back up in the draft. That way, when the draft gets close, we know these teams are going to be hungry, so we can get more when we trade back a second time, which is kind of crazy, man. I mean, that's that's next level thinking. I see you, Philly. I see you, Miami, if that's what they're trying to do. I mean, hey, props to them for pulling that kind of thing off. But if there was a thought of them trading with a divisional team like the Lions, well, there has been rumors that they would be able to give up a first round pick. They do have 10 picks this year. The brother of Chris Spielman works for the Minnesota Vikings. So there is that connection there as well. That's Rick Spielman. And of course, the fact that they were willing to give up a first round pick next year could make the Lions potential suitors because again, I think they'd be very willing to say, hey, we'll take three first round picks. But the fact that they're a divisional team may just throw this completely off the table. And at that point, it's like, okay, well, there's a very good shot that they'd grab a tackle in this year's draft. But they could also go edge, something like that, even though their defensive line is kind of kind of stacked right now. I mean, you know, they love their defense over there. So whatever it's for, but the two things I see most likely would be offensive line and quarterback, which makes the most sense. You're probably not trading up for a defensive player. If they have their eyes on, you know, a Slater. If they have their eyes on a Sewell and they fall. They have their eyes on, I don't know, they have their eyes on potentially a Christian Darisol. And they're worried that he doesn't make it to 14 because there's teams like the Chargers in front of them. You know, in, in, those, op, in those situations, then maybe Minnesota could come on the table, but usually don't see those between divisional teams, but you never know. And of course, the Patriots, okay? Apparently, the Patriots have been talking to teams. Now, the Patriots, pretty simple. They'd be moving up from number 15 to take a quarterback. I don't think I've heard anything else other than that. And I don't know why they would trade up for anything else other than that. To me, it wouldn't make any sense. Patriots usually trade back, if anything, but not having a quarterback could make them a little bit interested in grabbing a quarterback and moving up. So, clarify, yes, the Patriots do have a quarterback. They do have Cam Newton, who's on the one-year deal. But I definitely don't think they think he's a future. I wouldn't think he's a future if I was the Patriots. So they could be interested in making something like this happen. And again, Justin Fields has been the main target with this. So as Lions fans, if you want to trade back, you should probably hope that Justin Fields falls. So there's definitely teams that are interested. I mean, you definitely talk about Brad Holmes. He has said that, yes, they have received phone calls. But a lot of this is going to have to go down to, number one, who does San Francisco take a three? Number two, what does Atlanta do with that fourth pick? Do they stay there? Do they move out? And uh, then after that, does Cincinnati and Miami kind of stick to what we're expecting to have happen with those two spots? At that point, the Lions could be looking at some trade offers depending on how that breaks down. What's great about hearing all these names is that if there's multiple teams interested, it could definitely drive that price up for that pick. So if one quarterback slips through, I truly believe there could be price flying through the roof. Now, with all of these teams, Philadelphia, Patriots, uh, who is the other team? Philadelphia Patriots, Vikings. Apparently, they've also reached out to the Carolina Panthers, according to this rumor. So Carolina, who sits at number eight right behind us, is also involved in this. Now, you would think that, okay, Carolina, you know, they may have the advantage here because they're not as far to move up. But that also means the Lions could 
take a better could, could be a better deal for this teams now some people may be worried about the lions so it may force them to move up with the detroit lions but even brad holmes says he doesn't think that he has to sell anything what i think could give the lions advantage here is not necessarily taking less but taking more future okay you talk about a team like the lions they could be willing to take more future picks than other teams are when they move back and that could allow certain teams let's just say hypothetically it's a team like washington football team now, that's a long way to move back they're not in this but if they're saying hey we want to move up we want to go get somebody yes they would have to give up a ton of return but they could also start throwing in future picks as well and i think the lions not 100 sure could be willing to do that of course with more picks this year you got to have more picks this year too you can't just have this first round and then all future but they could be willing to accept more future deals than some other teams because they, they seem to be very in on you know what we can do two years from now and it's actually something that dan campbell brings up later on the rich eisen show as a way that they're looking to draft people which goes exactly right back to what we said with our you know for the future video on how the lions could draft players so it fit perfectly there we were on something uh clearly when dan campbell also brought it up that when they're drafting players that yeah they're looking for it this year but they're also saying guys that can be here for a long time two years three years on the road which means you have to take into consideration the analytics of development how long it takes to develop what positions need to be developed and uh, who can be impact starters now this also comes from albert breer there's very few people that know dan campbell that believe they will take receiver with that high of a pick all right the consensus like like the main three we've been hearing about the detroit lines if they stay at seven would be a guy like sewell slater or parsons one of those three guys now parsons has the ties talking about chris spielman uh we're talking about working out with jason cabinda who of course we just said was gonna be back slater the offensive tackle out of northwestern and of course sewell the offensive tackle out of uh oregon now that's not like a report but it's just like apparently what people are believing is that would be one of those three guys you got a guy like slater who's played right tackle position in the past even though that wasn't at his best he did play it so he has experience doing it you look at Sewell has been working out at right tackle of course lines let to make their decision on how they feel about that because he hasn't played right tackle before it's only been guard and left tackle and then you take a look at a guy like Micah Parsons and Parsons with the connections to Spielman this is one of those things where a guy like Chris Spielman maybe could have some impact over this uh just same way that we think Dorsey could you know maybe not to the same extent but but a slight act even though Micah Parsons could come on a trade back I mean, a lot of craziness going on about the draft time but we always got to keep up on these rumors because you never know what could happen a lot of craziness you never know what could happen not overlook the positions that we haven't talked about really at all i mean with same thing happened with hawkinson you remember when hawkinson not, not to the same extent but they didn't meet with hawkinson then they drafted hawkinson because they really kept it under the radar that was the last regime i don't know how this regime is going to handle stuff but that you know still could happen i mean they could be slick and you know darisol or tevin jenkins hopefully tevin jenkins uh someone like that you know maybe a wusu cuomo someone that you, you haven't really heard much connections to with the lions you never know cornerback i mean i don't expect those things to happen but you just never know because you know all these other names are out there they're all like oh this is what i but then all of a sudden you get somebody like oh snap even if it's on a trade back situation but now let's talk about this a little bit so dan campbell was on the rich eisen show and he had a couple of notes that i just wanted to write down and discuss with you and we'll dive into the drafting first so one thing that he brought up number one is that he will not be drafting a long snapper he will not draft a punter and he will not draft a kicker so take those three positions off the board that will not happen not 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 at all but like it won't happen at seven so there you go i mean hey any insight's good insight uh, dan campbell will tell you what he can tell you and he told us he did straight up i mean hey, some coaches might even hide that like oh we might take a long snapper you know i mean hey, you know for being honest we might be interested in that long snapper you know like you're not drafting a long snapper so he was straight up about that oh i guess you're bob quinn sorry i did say when he was asked about a situation of a guy like, a guy like smith a guy like waddle a guy like parsons those three guys i mean how do you basically you know pick between those players right if you're at number seven now he wasn't going to tell us which one he would take but he did say uh that he thinks all those three guys would be worthy of that pick would be worthy of that selection and he would be happy with any of them now again you know he could just be saying that i mean of course he's not going to say you know i like those two but you know that other one uh, yeah like i'm drafting that guy. like okay he's not going to say that so you know it's just it's whatever we can gather from a guy like dan campbell i just thought i would throw it in there but now let's talk a little bit about some of the takeaways i had he did talk about jared goff and he, he's kind of repeated and reiterated the same things that we've talked about all season with jared goff and the reason they like him is because they believe he's durable they believe you know that he's unshakable and they know that he is a winner right he's had the winning background so they like jared goff they made it sound pretty clear like hey goff is our guy this season i mean if you just listen to kind of anything that brad holmes dan campbell said it's their guy for this year he's got to prove himself but uh you expect him to be the starting quarterback this year and this is why i don't believe they'll go quarterback even though you can't take that option off the table when you got john dorsey on the fact that he was experienced and i thought that was important because experience of course that means he 
was in the league, and that means not rookie quarterback. So yeah, I mean, okay, it, Goff is going to be our next uh, quarterback next year. I mean, they already. I mean, Brad Holmes straight up told us that. So what are we even projecting at that point? The next, the biggest thing here will be: will they draft someone for behind it and potentially be the future? I don't think it'll happen this year, considering Goff's contract, the way it's set up. Your out isn't for you know not this year, not this next year, but the year after that. So it probably make more sense for them to draft them next year based on how Goff plays this year. And then even then, you could still have Goff playing and still have him develop for one season. It would just make more sense based on his contract that way because for the next two years, you're probably not getting out of that deal. I mean, you could, but you're definitely taking a lot of dead cap on there. As I mentioned before, the one part I did take away was the fact that he brought up that, yeah, they're drafting guys for this year, but I mean, they're really looking ahead till next year and the year after that. And that's why they could be very interested, as I mentioned, in adding you know future picks. Like Other teams may not be interested in it, and they may want them all this season. So they could be very interested in, hey, we'll take your future picks. But not only that, it's also based on the players that they draft the positions. You know, this is the analytical department for you, Brad Holmes. What positions take time to develop? And that's why we did our future video. So go check that out. You know, the Lions two-year plan, I think it's called something like that. Go check that video. We, we dive into it. But we also touched on the Jared Goff situation. Why it was so important to get a quarterback back in the trade, knowing that you're sitting at a spot like number seven. And, uh, yeah, I, I just thought that was really cool that he brought that part up. They did say uh, that, they, you know, they, they want to be able to get the balls in playmakers' hands. And there's a couple of guys, they just have to get them into the building to see it. Now, that could obviously mean draft, or it could mean the fact that he needs to get players that we've already brought in, signed, in the building to see it. Or players from the roster already, because of all the COVID stuff, they haven't been working out. You know, they haven't started that stuff yet. Wants to draft the best player at the position we are picking. So the best player available at that spot, in their opinion, who, who they think is, you know, best player available. But they also stated uh, that they didn't want to draft by needs. Reiterated that again, Dan Campbell. Hey, we don't want to have to do this by needs. So, you know, expect a lot of craziness. That's very possible to happen. They said they've had a lot of fun with it. So uh, this could be a very entertaining draft that could throw a lot of us off. And it's going to be very difficult to project, to project, I believe, the draft for this season. But we'll try. It's just, it's just going to be difficult. He did say that he does know that biting kneecaps is a 15-yard penalty. I mean, A, I mean, I'd rather bite the kneecap and take 15 yards for that than get a hands to the face call. I'm just saying, hands to the face? Really? That was terrible. What we are getting with these answers is not that we're getting these crazy new answers that are surprising us. It's the consistency of answers. You know, how they're going to build a team. Knowing that they're building a team. Where are we two years from now? Things like that. And it's also, you know, how they signed in free agency. It's best player available in the draft. They've followed the same plan all up till now and their answers have not changed. Their thoughts on Jared Goff has stayed the same since they traded for him. That is one thing that is to like. They clearly have a plan they're going towards, and we can expect to see that play out, okay? Because that's actually what they're doing this entire offseason, and it has not went away from that, which is a good thing. Because once you start wavering, you start giving us all these crazy answers, unless you're trying to throw us off, then all of a sudden it's like, hold up, do they actually have a plan here, or where? what direction is this team going? They have a plan. We'll see if it pays off, but it's, it's a clear direction that they're going, and we've touched on it, like in our future video. I mean, we've touched on these little things that they're talking about with Jared Goff, with the future, you know, with how they could draft this year, with you know, just all of it into one, best player available. So they have kept consistent answers, which is exciting. It is. It is. But with consistent errors, we still have no idea what the heck this draft's going to look like, which is awesome. I'm so excited for the draft. Let me know your thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.